In this section, we'll demonstrate how to prepare a typical bed for biointensive farming. A novice gardener seeing John Jevon's beautiful biointensive mini farm for the first time might feel overwhelmed. But Tim tells us that when laying out your first bed, there are really two main considerations. What is important is the width and the length. We need a minimum of three feet, ideally more of four or five feet. The wider that is, the more of a microclimate we have, which is more conducive for the plants. As far as length, again, a minimum of three feet, ideally more like 10 or even 20 feet is much better. More often than not, you'll need to weed your bed before you can begin double digging. The first step in weeding is loosening the soil and to do that properly, you'll need to know how to use your spading fork. Tim shows us how. One of the things that's important is to hold the fork correctly, centered, so that when I shift my weight, my body weight helps direct that right from the center of the fork. I put the fork at a 45 degree angle and then lift my foot, the heel of my shoe, right on the shoulder of the fork and keep the shaft at a 45 degree angle along my leg. And then I just shift my weight forward and the fork goes right into the soil. You can bend your knee a little bit or arch the fork to slide it in all the way. A key principle of the biointensive method is to use as little effort as possible. All of our motions, nice and very smooth. And you can tell that this bed has been double dug before. It makes it very easy to go in and do it again. You need to let your body know that you don't have to work hard in order to get the job done. This allows us to garden for a long period of time with ease. There's a misconception that planting and digging a, a garden bed is really hard work. But if we are doing this correctly, it's actually really easy, fun, and it feels good. All right. Now that we've loosened all the soil, we're going to begin weeding. Which I enjoy. <laughs> These weeds come up real easy after the soil has been loosened. Of course you want to get it as much of the roots as you can. With the raised bed weeded and ready, let's take a moment to review the concept of double digging. You'll divide your bed into trenches. The number of trenches you dig will depend on the length of your bed, and each trench will consist of an upper and lower trench. The upper trench is entirely dug out, and the soil gently dumped into the preceding trench. The soil in the lower trench is simply loosened, as compared to traditional methods, which generally require you to dig only six inches into the ground, the hallmark of double digging is to dig 24 inches, which allows for healthier soil and plants. Before you begin trenching, you'll need some five gallon buckets and a digging board to keep from compacting the soil while you work. This is our digging board. As you can see, it's got a nice handle to carry, makes it nice and easy. This is a 5 8 inch exterior plywood and we put a coat of linseed oil on and let it dry and after it's dry we put one more coat of linseed oil and that really prolongs the life of this digging board. It's plywood, anyone can make it. We're going to place the digging board on the bed and you'll notice it's about four or five feet wide which is convenient because that's also the width of the bed. It's about three feet in length, which makes a nice working area while I'm standing on the board. Now we're ready to begin to double dig our bed. We start by removing the soil from the first upper trench. Using his spade, Tim explains the dimensions of each trench. A convenient way to start this first trench is to measure with my spade. It happens to be 12 inches long, so I'll bring my digging board in that distance, 12 inches. We also know that we're going to go 12 inches down for the first trench. 
Now Tim shows us the proper technique as he begins to dig the first upper trench. Remember that when we begin, we want to pay attention to how our body is moving, the economy of motion. So it's not about strength, it's about technique. Working very slowly and deliberately. Nice and easy. Right in the bucket. Soil just falls in. So as I'm dropping the spade, I'm letting go of the tension in my wrist, which will enable me to do this for a long time. Another way to clean this trench out is with a pendulum motion. You can imagine your body is just almost like a, a large pendulum. So I'm just going to come in. Now that the soil has been removed from the first upper trench, Tim shows us how to loosen the soil in the lower trench. There's a few things to keep in mind. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back 12 inches and place our fork right there so that when we pull the fork back through the soil, it doesn't get caught in the path. I'm going to place these tines straight down and simply step on the shoulder of the fork and like an elevator, just allow it to go right down. I'm going to shift my body weight. If they're a little tight, I might just wiggle a bit. And I'll come back out. And this time, I'll come back four inches. Again, placing my foot down, nice and gentle. Shift my body weight. There we go. And it comes right out. This time, I'm not going to lift the fork all the way out of the ground. I'm going to save my effort, come back another four inches, tines go straight in, just like the elevator. Nice and easy, that was quick. Shift my body weight. The reason we're doing this is to create good soil structure. It allows the plant roots to go deeper and to bring nutrients and air to the plants themselves. I'm going to be digging the second trench. So I'm going to move the digging board back 12 inches. And I'm going to measure the 12 inches by looking at the spade. Lisa is now going to dig another trench right next to the one Tim just made and she will put the soil she digs into that first trench. <laughs> 